Welcome to Ben's Boss, a podcast for business owners and creatives who want to make their money work and set a new standard for entrepreneurship with your hosts and twin sisters, Caitlin and Samantha. We are back with another podcast episode. What are we talking about today? I have no idea. First, we are drinking strawberry matcha lattes, right? Mm -hmm. With pistachio milk, which is really, I think everyone should have pistachio milk. From Lazy Sundays. It's really good. It's actually really good. We're going to get high off caffeine and sugar. My two favorite things. Yep. For today's episode, the topic is going to be everyone's favorite slash least favorite, and that is money. Money, 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 money. Money. Money, 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 money. Take it with Money. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Because some people love talking about money, but most people hate talking about money. And there's lots of questions, and we could just talk about it all day. First things first, in your opinion, can money buy you happiness? I feel like that's a very tough question to answer. Well, I can start with a statistic I found that only every one in five Americans Thanks. believes that it can and that the other four don't. And I kind of think that's BS. I yeah. think people just say, I think, I think people lied when they took that test. Well, I think it's a hard, it's hard to say a yes or no because I feel yes. like it's a very complex question to ask. Yes. Do I think that money alone can buy you happiness? No. Right. But at the same time, I think that the surplus of money that you have can kind of alleviate the stress right. of your financial yeah. independence. And yeah. Money can buy you freedom. Yeah. I think that that's... And freedom's happiness. Yeah. But it depends on what you do with it. Money can buy you freedom. Um, I think it can buy like you and your loved ones and your friends. Like, I think it just depends on what you choose to do with the money that you have, the money that you make. Yeah. Like there, there was a book that I read that talked about being rich and being wealthy. They're two very different things. Yes. I think that there's so much more to life than it being black and white. Yeah. And that goes with like everything. And I don't think you should be ashamed to be like, money makes me happy. Yeah. You know, cause it's really just, you're talking about all the things associated with it. And as long as I think if, as long as money isn't the root of your happiness, mm -hmm. like if you take the money away and you can still be happy with yourself and in life, yeah. then that's good. Like money should not be the only reason. It shouldn't be the thing driving you. Yeah, that determines yeah. whether or not you're happy. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I mean, I think that there's plenty of people out there that are less fortunate, that are happy with their lives, are content with their lives. Yeah. I think that it also goes back to your mindset. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, less fortunate people out there that are miserable. And there's less fortunate out people out there that make the best of the situations and the opportunities that they have and are happy and content with, with what they have yeah and then there are super wealthy rich people who are miserable absolutely that are not again going back to books that i've read like there's people that are so greedy and money hungry and so driven by wanting more and, and not having enough and yeah. trying to once they get enough, it's not enough. They need more. They, yeah, and they end up losing it all. Right. Literally losing it all because of greed. Greed, greed and jealousy are the two worst things. Ego. You could be. Ego. Too. Feliz Navidad. On to the next one. Why is money important and why is it not? Because I think it's both. I mean, money covers your basic needs. Mm -hmm. You need money to eat put a roof over your head, go to the doctor. I think it can also better your life in certain ways if you let it. The opposite of the greedy people who, you know, let it ruin their lives. Yeah. Um, it could bring you more opportunity. Yeah. You want to know one thing that really upsets me about our education system and society is that... Wait, are you going to say that you don't remember a thing you learned in school? Because I don't. <laughs> 
No. They don't, like, we're not educated enough in school to understand the different types of, like, we, we're not educated on money, on finances. We're not. Like, if we choose to take elective classes, that's on us to decide that. If our parents choose to teach us how to be good with money, then they choose to do that. But we're not really educated in the school systems no. how, how to, like, solve real-world problems. Do you think that's done on purpose? I don't know. I don't, I mean, it's like a scheme by no, the government. I don't, I don't think that important yeah. to our education system. I agree with you though, it should be. I think we had in high school something, some type of class, like economics or something, but you chose to take it. That's why I said And I didn't choose to electives. take it. I took all the electives. I took accounting, I took, I took business and classes. College, but and but I don't think we should choose to take those. I think these are basic things. Yeah. Why is it not important? Well, in my opinion, slash a fact, you can't replace good mental health with money. You can't substitute, like, depression with money. And I mean, money can only be a distraction for you for so long if you're in a bad place. Yeah. Everybody's perception of money and happiness is, is all different. And yeah. the world would not be what it is today if everybody's thought process and perception of things was the same so there has to be people that are greedy there has to be people that are less fortunate there has to be you know the one percenters there has to be you know people that are happy with what they have being at the top and people that are happy with what they have being at the bottom but i think the question is what brings them to that mindset like mm -hmm. how how does your brain develop or how does your morals or your thoughts on financial independence or wealth or being rich, where where does that develop? Where does that come from? Because you see people that are born into low income, poverty ridden communities and families that stay and kind of fall into that, you're a yeah. product of your environment, but there's also people that break the mold and having absolutely no help at all find and in whatever way it is financial yeah. independence wealth success because you can't necessarily say oh well a poor person from a poor family is always going to be poor a rich person from a rich family they're always going to be it's how does your mind develop we're not educated on it in school we're not always a product of our environment so where does that education on money and your perception of money and wealth come from not to like really dive into you know yeah. what we've been through in life we've we had a very normal childhood well yeah it appeared that we had a very normal childhood to us normal middle class yeah i think yeah upbringing um Until, but like, then we also school. saw things completely fall apart we saw having absolutely nothing we saw people being irresponsible we saw that we had it was kind of like okay well we kind of have to survive here yeah how are we gonna survive <laughs> what are we talking about i don't know we always do that but then we always bring it back so i'm gonna bring it back tell you a story when i was in cleveland and I was working with somebody, and this person is very successful, very influential. I always looked up to them in terms of like, just being an entrepreneur and stuff like that. But I remember one time he asked me, he was like, why, I was talking about a business I wanted to start. I remember the business too, I wanted to call it Bougie, and it was gonna be like a t-shirt brand, and it was gonna say Bougie. <laughs> Cause remember like the song Bad and Bougie came out. So. But I just remember him asking me like, why do you want to start a business? And I just remember being like, I want to have that power to do things. And he kind of not really shamed me for saying that. He was like, you, you can't say that around people. And it's not like I was like, I want to be powerful and do bad things. I, like, you know what I mean? I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to use that power for bad things. So the question is money versus power. Like what's the difference? Do you think that you very poorly explained that because you tend to not explain things like your stories very well do you think that i'm mis misunderstood a lot because i don't well what's in here doesn't always come out do you think what your money gives you more opportunity not so much power but opportunity no, money gives you power wow sam 
But power is not a bad thing. I don't understand why everyone does that. It's not like money doesn't necessarily give you power. How does money give you power? But how? Well, here's the thing. I know money isn't the same thing as power. I know it's not like if you're handed a bunch of money, you're all of a sudden like this powerful person. Mm -hmm. It's what you do with the money. I think money, you don't have to have money to be powerful either. There's a lot of people out there who still make change and stuff. But I think money gives you the ability to have a platform to be influential in a good way, to make positive changes in the world. More opportunity. Don't use power, use opportunity. Power There's nothing wrong so with being negative. powerful. There's nothing right. wrong Right, why it. is it so negative? That's the thing. It's just the way you're, the way it makes it sound, like money and power, like money gives you power, like that just sounds like a negative connotation on, on, on the perception of money. So I want to have the power to make a change? That's negative? No. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I want power. I want all the money and I want all the power in the world. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know. I guess, hmm. I guess power and opportunity. I, I know. I totally agree with you. Oh, I just spit. I totally agree with you that Power has like this negative, you know, association to the word. I can kind of see the more I'm trying to understand it, I can understand what you're trying to say and what you're com- where you're coming from. But another argument is, does money alone give you the opportunity to... You can say power. <laughs> have No, I am. I'm going to say it. Okay. I'm going to say it. Power and opportunity. Like, can you not have power and opportunity? No, I said that I don't, before. There's a lot of people out there who have the power to change without yeah, without finances. So I don't think they're the same thing, money and mm-hmm. power. But I don't think there should always be this negative kind of is connotation the right word for power. Even though I should practice the way I talk about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your benefit of being powerful? Making positive changes. And what positive changes are those? Well, first of all, you'd have financial freedom, so you can use that time wisely Mm -hmm. and do, you know, charitable work, charitable donations, put on those charitable events and put on different events that gives other people the platform to do good if Mm -hmm. they don't have that platform. So maybe you're right, maybe more opportunities. But to me, if I were to look at somebody who does all that stuff, I'd be like, wow, that's a very powerful, influential person. Okay, maybe I just want to be influential. I don't know. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I think we both kind of have a different perspective on it after this conversation. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Last thing that I thought we could discuss is, is growth possible without money? Yes. But I guess it depends on what type of growth yeah. you're aiming to achieve. Yes. Personal growth is very possible. Absolutely. I think that there's a lot of growth that can be made without the benefit of you know, money. Yes. And I also think that you can have growth in business and in a career without your own. There's investors, there's opportunities yeah. to raise money crowdfunding like there's plenty of ways to raise capital it's definitely the term growth is very broad in this question yeah because obviously i think personal growth you can grow without money businesses yes can grow without money um like you said because i was also going to say i guess it kind of depends on well i don't know what your business is and what type of growth in the business you're trying to create Yeah, I think, but a lot of times I think people in business look at their finances Mm -hmm. and if they haven't made as much money as they thought or expected or if they haven't reached their goal, they automatically assume the negative, like, I'm not growing as a business, but you are. Yeah. I mean, if more people know about you, you're out there, you're putting more about your business out there and networking and stuff like that, you can grow in that way. And kind of like you said, you can get investors and stuff too and grow without emptying your own pockets there's also like growing as a society do you think you can grow as a society without money or it depends 
what in society are you trying to, you know? Yeah. I think people can come together without money, mm -hmm. but in order for like an economy to grow and stuff. Yeah, you need money for the economy to grow. Yeah. And then people in society have to be order, have to be order, have to be able to afford like healthcare and stuff like that. And if, I don't know, I guess this could be like a whole separate episode. Yeah. I have one more thing for you and it's a challenge. And it has nothing to do with money, but it's gonna cost money. <laughs> you can tell me whether or not you wanna do it. It's just something fun for our next episode. In the time being, I'm thinking each one of us can go on Amazon and just find the most outrageous, ugliest thing to wear for the next episode. I think it'll be fun. It'll be a fun challenge. And then all 20 of our viewers can decide who won the ugly challenge. Do you want to do it? Sure. Okay, let's do it. Also, by the way, happy Leo season. Yep. Happy Leo season. Woo woo. It's our birthday in a few days. We're gonna be 30 in one week. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for listening slash watching, depending where you at. Um, like and subscribe and follow and comment and live life. Mm -hmm.